Good morning. Today is Monday, May 22nd. The time right now in Singapore is 10 minutes to noon. And let's do a bit of a recap as to what happened last Friday on Wall Street. We see prices of equity market became, uh, started to recover. And of course, it closes on a weaker note. But by and large, you can see that the market is very, very positive looking. And uh, this has got a lot to do with the outlook for the debt ceiling negotiation between the White House and the Republican Party, uh, in essence, the House of Representatives. So we know that up to the weekend, there was no progress being made. Uh, in fact, there were twice in which on Friday when they met, uh, Republican Party actually walked out of the negotiation table. And now that President Biden is back in Washington after attending the G7 meeting, uh, the negotiation is going to start afresh. We have very little time now. Uh, from now until the X date, so-called June the 1st, uh, we have just slightly over a week time and uh, time is of the essence. Market is getting very jittery, but by and large market is very positive, uh, expecting a breakthrough in the lifting of the debt ceiling. So market has been buying up basically. So that momentum can actually see prices continue to, to move higher uh, even before the uh, result is known. So basically what uh, market is expecting the market if can actually pull it a little bit uh, to 33,253 to 33,330 in the Dow Jones, that, will, that could actually be a base in which a market can propel higher to challenge the month high, which is currently at 34,257.8, which is slightly below the year high at 34,342.3. So by and large, these two levels may act as a very hard cap for prices to consider whether they can actually break through. But by and large, this is going to be the target if there's going to be an extended rally from where we are today. Okay, in the S&P 500, uh, the S&P 500 actually broke out uh, into a new high for the year to 4,312.8, as you can see here, before a slight pullback as to the profit taking that we have seen uh, just before the market closes on Friday. So by and large, the market is very, very close to my target area of 4,240 to 4,000. 342. So this area may actually be an area of danger for those who are still holding long positions um, because I believe uh, that this area may actually be quite uh, quite attractive to take profit for those who have already gone long. Okay. So in the NASDAQ, we continue uh, to see market continue to edge higher, making another marginal new high for the year at 13,844.8 thereabout. And this level is definitely within touching distance of my target range of 14,135 to 14,712. So again, market is getting very, very close to my target area and the fact that we are almost at the month end. If the prices manage to go into this uh, bracket of prices and did not break through, then it is laying the groundwork for a reversal. So do watch out uh, in the face of uh, the uncertainty surrounding the debt ceiling negotiation. And of course, the still lingering banking crisis uh, holding along is getting to be a little bit hairy for me. So I'm just going to watch this market and see if I can get a more de definitive uh, selling signal before I take up a position. Over in Asia, we can see that uh, Hong Kong managed to recover from last Friday low. Last Friday, we can see that the, the market actually closed below the April low for the first time this month. And uh, now it has gone back up again, challenging the uh, 20,000 levels. Right now it's trading at 19,710. So will this be enough for the market to form a base to go higher? I would say the upside potential is actually quite limited. First, the barrier to higher prices between 20,322. And then the lower end here is also quite limited. Target is probably around 19,000. So upside let very little uh, opportunity downside also very little opportunity so if you can afford to avoid this market by all means do so okay over the nikkei we can see the last friday nikkei actually registered a new high not only against last year it is the highest since 1990 so we are seeing a 30 odd years high and this is on the back of a surprisingly good set of numbers for the gdp on the first quarter market uh, did not expect such a stellar performance but what the number released was double what the market expected so and that explains why uh, the nikkei is at such elevated prices but again we are beginning to see uh, at least for me my target is going to be about 31,600 uh, thereabout so giving me very little reason to go long in fact I've actually holding on to short position which is not working out very well for me right now but I have very very light position and I am more than happy to actually uh, 
scale up my sell position if I do get a confirmative uh, reversal pattern because I think this market is seriously overvalued relative to its fundamentals. Okay, over in the uh, mainland equity markets, we can see the CSI 300 following Hong Kong rebound. It has also managed to hold on uh, to its gain. And uh, we saw that the market actually tested last month's low, uh, which is at 3,925.5. It bridged marginally before it car, uh, recovers on a close on close basis. On a closing basis, this market has not taken out the April low. So that could be the basis in which the market can build a base. So we will see whether that is going to be the case. Over in energy market, we can see the gold, uh, sorry, uh, the WTI crude oil actually managed a marginal high for the week at the $73.53 before losing the ground a little bit. So if this is going to be a technical pullback, I would think that somewhere between $67.50 to $69.10, that level could be very conducive for buying. Uh, let's see what happens because I think the potential is for a, for a test of the May high, uh, which is at $75 and, uh, oh, sorry, $76.07, uh, with the possibility that it may even extend higher to $83.50. Over in gold market, we saw that the gold actually saw a robust recovery on Friday. Uh, the low traded last week was on Thursday at 1,952, which is very, very close to my uh, original target at $1,950. And this Friday's rally, uh, last Friday's rally was actually very conducive for uh, the case uh, that the that the gold market may have hit a bottom for now. And if that's the case, any pullback to let's say $1,978 no, $1, to $1,972, that could be an, an area of opportunity to uh, start laying buy positions for an eventual uh, challenge of the all-time high at $2,081. S Silver is also exhibiting the same uh, firmness. Uh, we saw last Friday, we also have a rally in the silver market. So if the market can come back and test the last month's low, which is currently at $23.57, that could be the basis in which uh, the market can go even higher. Let's see whether that's going to be the case. Okay. Over in dollar, uh, the dollar has actually done very well uh, beyond my expectation. Uh, originally, I was still bearish on dollar, but now it looks at the market that wants to go up. Market went up to as high as 103.49 uh, last week. And which is on Friday, and since then it has pulled back a little bit. So if this pullback sees prices back into 102.36 to 102.80 levels, that could be an area to actually buy, uh, because I think the market is getting ready to go even higher. Okay, and if this is the case for dollar, that means all other currencies should come down. But right now we are seeing a rebound in all these principal currency here. Euro dollar had hit a low of just under 107.60, and now it's rebounding. And if this uh, rebound can actually extend a little bit into 109 levels. That would be a great level to consider taking up short position. Same thing for sterling. Sterling also hit a low of 120, just under 124, and then now it's beginning to rebound. And if this extension uh, can extend a little bit higher to 125, uh, 35 to 125.70, that area is actually conducive for selling. And in the Aussie market, similarly, market actually hit the 66 cents and then rebound. And if market can extend a little bit higher to 67 cents and marginally above, ideally into the bracket between 0 0.6712 to 0 0.6737, the area is a selling opportunity. Well, dollar cat is a little bit different. Now, while the dollar is doing relatively well rebounding, but we can see that the uh, the price action in dollar cat is a little bit different from all the other currency pair, purely because crude oil seems to be coming back again. So if crude oil is remains uh, elevated, that means it is supportive for a stronger Canadian dollars. That means the dollar Canadian's upside is quite potential, uh, potentially limited. But however, if the market can actually extend a little bit to 135.70 to 136, I think that would be a great area to position short because if the Canadian dollars is strong, right, because crude oil prices is strong, then it can actually saw uh, dollar cap uh, actually unraveling to challenge a 133 levels. Over in dollar yen, uh, this one is also outperform beyond my expectation. Uh, originally, I was holding to, on to a bearish view. Now, in view of the market rallying to 138.75, I have turned positive because the dollar index is also positive right now. So if we can see a pullback to let's say 136.20 to 136.80 levels, that could be a conducive for buying. Uh, the market may actually go a bit higher to go into 140 to 142 level. Uh, level. So the potential is actually quite good here. Okay. 
uh, over in Bitcoin, we can see Bitcoin has uh, lost some ground over the weekend. On Sunday, we saw prices was actually hovering above 27,000. At one stage, it was 27,000, almost $300. And then this morning, we saw the market unravel back to test the lower end of 26,000. The low traded so far is 26,547. And uh, this area is actually a buying zone. If the market can stabilize here, that could be the basis in which it's going to propel Bitcoin higher. I think technically the market is getting ready to rally uh, in the face of the uncertainty surrounding the U.S. debt ceiling negotiation and the ongoing banking crisis. That leads to a lot of people having a very positive outlook on cryptocurrencies as a whole. So this could be the catalyst that may see cryptocurrencies uh, rallying. As far as Bitcoin concerned, a test, a retest of 30,000 is not impossible. So this is my two cents worth. Hope you are uh, uh, Enjoy my analysis here and uh, I wish you guys uh, happy trading today and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Take care.